Oh. Good evening to my big Rock Sound Church family as we come together for our midweek Bible study. Uh, it's just good to be here as we come down to the close of another day. Uh, the last time we were here together, we were dealing with deliverance, talking about deliverance, and we're going to carry over uh, this week, and we're going to touch on prosperity and protection. Prosperity and protection. We're still dealing with this kingdom living thing uh, and talking about lining up with God. And there is value in you lining up with God. Uh, we'll give just a couple of minutes for others to come in um, as, as we get ready to go forward this evening. Uh, if you have your Bible, uh, and you want to get a little bit ahead, you can go over to Proverbs chapter 13. We're going to be lifting some scriptures out of there tonight. Uh, when, when we talk about when we talk about prosperity and protection, in most cases, the believer's mind automatically goes uh, to the point of material things when it comes to prosperity. The believer is, is believing for their desires and the wants of their hearts, but I, I want you to understand tonight that Prosperity is a reward for the righteous. It's a reward for the righteous. Uh, the Bible tells us that even the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. So ultimately, even when it appears that the wicked is flourishing and they're gaining wealth, Unbeknownst to them, God has already made a way for a transference of that wealth from the wicked to the righteous, according to his word. And we as believers have to believe that and accept it for what it is. It's God's word. It's his promise to those that believe. But for the believer tonight, I, I really want you to understand that prosperity is a reward for the righteous. Prosperity is a byproduct of your righteousness, just like deliverance is a byproduct of righteousness. Prosperity is a byproduct of righteousness. Uh, the first scripture we're going to look at tonight, the context of the scriptures found in Proverbs 13, Going over to verse 21. Verse 21, Proverbs 13. I'll give you a second to get there. Uh, just a blessing from God for God to speak to us as the righteous ones to let us know that he always has our best interest at heart. Proverbs 13 and 21 says, evil pursues sinners but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. I'm gonna stop right there for one minute. It says, but to the righteous, good shall be repaid. For us as believers, we can't go wrong for doing good. For God repays us for doing good. It's out of that byproduct of our righteousness when we do good, God desires to prosper us. Can, can I share something with you tonight? If you, you're viewing virtually, whether you're in the sanctuary tonight, let me share this with you. There's a benefit in doing good because you can't beat God's giving. Whenever you decide to do something good for someone else, you need to know tonight, you will never come up short for doing good for someone else because God has already promised that you shall be repaid. Can I share this with you? What God gives you in repayment will always be greater than whatever you put out initially. 
That ought to speak to somebody's heart today. Whether in, in your heart, maybe you had a desire to help somebody, but you thought if you helped them, you were going to come up short. I just stopped by to tell you, if you're living by faith, if, if you're walking in this thing called righteousness, the word of God guarantees us that the righteous who do good shall be repaid. What a blessing that is. And then by verse 22, he says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. It is reinforcement. The word of God here now says, and Solomon says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, not just to the next generation, but the generation after that. When a good man decides to walk in righteousness, God can prosper him to the point that he'll be able to be a benefit to two generations. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says to his children's children. So that could even go farther than two generations. Mm -hmm. So what we need to understand is there's no penalty in doing good. It's always prosperity in doing good. So don't block your own blessing by when a chance shows up that you can do something good, but you're hesitant to do it because you feel like it's going to go unrewarded. I just want you to know tonight, God is still in the blessing business. When, when we think about this prosperity, it includes material wealth, but it's not limited to just that. I, I don't want every time you hear the word prosperity, you start to think about the material things. The meaning of this word includes the overall quality and the fruitfulness of life. That means to be prosperous, you can be productive in more than just your financial area of life. You can be productive throughout your whole life. And that's a quality that God gives us for walking in righteousness that will bear good fruit in this life. Our deeds should be good, which will produce prosperity. The way we treat others should be good. That will produce prosperity. And as, as we move forward, I want you to understand that the word prosperity is broader than material wealth. In this society that we live in today, many people are consumed with that word, but only when they think of prosperity do they think of money and financial gain. How to make the next dollar? What are they gonna do? What, what new product are they gonna put out there to sell? What, what next big, big invention that they can come up with? What opportunity can they develop? How many jobs they can work so that they can turn prosperous? But I stop by to tell you tonight that prosperity is in God's hands. Mm -hmm. You don't have to kill yourself to be prosperous if you're a part of the kingdom of God. Because when you're a part of the kingdom of God, it becomes a benefit of your righteousness. God will see to it that in the end that the wealth and treasure of his kingdom ends up in the hands of the righteous. I want you to hear that today. God has a blessing for all of us who decide to serve him and worship him in spirit and truth. He has a blessing for all of us and even beyond the blessing for all of us, God is able to more than meet our needs, but he allows the, the, the treasures of the kingdom of God to be available to those who walk in righteousness. Hmm. He must be able to trust us and 
we have to, when we find ourselves being trusted by God, we have to be willing to use good, mature, and faithful stewardship. We have to use mature and faithful stewardship when, when we're working in the kingdom of God and walking in our righteousness. Because whatever God delivers to us, he delivers it to us for us to hold on to and to use to father promote the kingdom of God. God doesn't deliver it us, deliver the blessing to us in order that he'd have to take it away from us. But he wants us to be mature and faithful in our stewardship when it comes to dealing with the blessings that he renders unto us. Now, let's consider it from this point of view. We serve a just God. Mm -hmm. And our just God is in a just kingdom. And he will reward the righteous, which is just. It's just for him to reward us who are righteous. You can't go wrong when you serve a just God and a just kingdom. Then it's just for him to reward the righteous because you are a citizen of the kingdom of God, because you are a daughter, son or daughter of the most high God, then you become an heir to all that is in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But you have to line up properly with the kingdom of God through the word of God in order to be in the proper posture to receive what God has for you. It is a principle. And the principle and understanding God's word is, is, is as permanent as eternity. God's word is not going to change toward the righteous. Those things that he's already spoken in our favor shall continue to be in our favor. God rewards the righteous for us living a clean life. We work at living a clean life. We work at living a life that's pleasing in God's eyesight. We work at trying to work within the kingdom of God to bring favor to ourselves through living a life that glorifies God. When we glorify God, God brings favor to us. Said on Sunday, favor is not fair. God blesses who he chooses, That's right. but his eyes is always on the righteous. Here it is. And because it's a principle of God, we have to make certain that we are willing to live according to his principles and his precepts. Also, righteousness benefits us by protecting us from the judgment of God. Can I say this? Tonight, sometimes God has to protect us from our sins. And, and we don't want to admit it at times, but sometimes because we are fallen humanity, because humanity is frail and fragile, God has pro to protect us sometimes from ourselves. And sometimes we can be our own worst enemy. I wish you heard me tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's essential. It's an essential standard by which God will judge the world. He'll ju judge the world according to righteousness. So in the kingdom of God, righteousness becomes the plumb line that God uses to measure whether or not our lives are truly lining up or whether we are out of alignment. There's no benefit in being out of alignment with the word of God and the kingdom of God. The benefit comes when we are truly in line with God 
when we are living and moving according to his word, his purpose, his principles, his principles, and then living within the will of God. When we pursue righteousness, then we have to learn that we must adjust our lives. I wish somebody would hear that tonight. When we're pursuing righteousness, we have to adjust our lives. We have, not only do we have to adjust our lives, we have to adjust our attitudes, we have to adjust our behavior, we have to adjust all of those things until they fall within God's standard of measure. God has a standard of measure that he uses when he looks at us to see are we within the guidelines that he set forth for us. We're going to look at one last piece of scripture tonight uh, in this lesson, going over to Isaiah, going over to Isaiah 28. Amen. 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 Isaiah 28. Give it just to you. Isaiah 28, and we're going to see what the prophet says to us tonight. Uh, verse number 16 is where I'm going to start. I'll give you a second to get there. Isaiah 28, going over to verse number 16. And this is God's word for his people, uh, spoken through Isaiah. The prophet, it says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, Whoever believes will not act hastily. Also, I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plummet. The hell will sweep away the refuge of lies and the waters will overflow hidden places. I'm, I'm gonna stop right there because he gives us some nuggets here when we start talking about the standard of God that we have to live up to. God is going to check the standard, but he says through Isaiah, the prophet, that in Zion, there's a stone for the foundation. He said a triad stone. So I want you to see how he breaks this thing down right now. At first he says it's a stone, not good enough. It had to be a tried stone, not good enough. It became a precious cornerstone, not good enough. He says it became a sure foundation. Y'all didn't get that. He starts out by talking about what was put in place in Zion? A stone for a foundation. That, that just kind of sounds okay. But he comes back and he says, let me tell you something about this stone. This stone was tried. Not only was it a tried stone, but it's a precious cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Then he makes sure you understand because it's tried and precious, it becomes a sure foundation. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Okay. When Christ comes, he's the tried stone. He's the precious cornerstone that becomes a sure foundation. And then he, he reminds us that whoever believes will not act hastily. 
That's why we have to be good stewards over our blessings. Why we have to be a good steward. We have to be mature and then be a good steward over the decisions that we make. Because Christ has paid such a price for us that it would not do justice for us to misuse what he's given us. By verse 17, he says, also I will make justice the measuring line. So how is he going to measure us? He's going to measure us with justice. So when he comes, justice is going to prevail. You need to hear me. When the Lord returns, justice will prevail. And righteousness shall be the plummet or the plumb line. And when we think of a plumb line, a plumb line is used in masonry work to make sure walls and bricks are lined up true and straight. Here it is. Righteousness guarantees that believers will be lined up true and straight. We need to hear that tonight. We can't afford to live any kind of way before the God that we serve. The God that's the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. We have to make sure that the standard that we follow is his standard. That we live our lives according to his standard. That we adjust our lives when they are out of order. That we adjust our attitudes and we adjust our behaviors until we fall within God's standard of measure. That's justice. Here it is, the final note. Everything we could possibly want or need can be found in the kingdom of God. I want somebody to hear that tonight. I don't care what you have need of, it's in the kingdom of God. All you have to do is ask. Make sure you're lining up properly. Make sure you're walking according to his principles and precepts. And then make your petition known before him. God is faithful. God is faithful and just. But everything we could possibly want or need can be found in the kingdom of God. And if our lives line up, the Lord wants us to have enjoy, and enjoy all of these things. It is. Being born again is not enough by itself. Being born again and joining the church is not enough by itself. Being born again, joining the church and participating in church activities is not enough by itself. You have to have an intimate relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. And once you put that relationship in place and you start to live your life according to the word of God, according to his principles and precepts, then God will carry out everything that he said he would do. Prosperity is yours, not just material things, but he's talking about a fruitful life, not just money. He's talking about a fruitful life, a productive life in the kingdom of God can be yours when you line up with God and you receive that prosperity. Not only will you receive the prosperity, but there's also protection there for you. He becomes your refuge in times of trouble. I want somebody to receive that tonight as we get ready to go. Everything you could possibly want to need can be found in the kingdom of God. I'm done right there tonight because I know there are some people viewing virtually. You've tried everybody else but the kingdom of God. Hmm. You've relied on some folk that you thought could make ends meet with you. 
you attached yourself to some folk that you thought were going to look out for you and have your best interest. You went head over heels for some folk that you thought were sold out for you. But when you looked around, you found yourself standing by yourself. I stopped by to tell you tonight, you don't have to hook a crew. You don't have to attach yourself to anybody doing anything. All you have to do is line up with the kingdom of God. And once you line up with the kingdom of God, you're going to find out that everything you have need of is in the kingdom. And God will withhold no good thing from you. That's in his word. That's his promise. That's his guarantee. He even tells you he'll give you the desires of your heart. But here's the key. In your relationship with God through Jesus Christ, God finds out if he can trust you or not. I hope God can trust you tonight. I hope you can start to see the prosperity come into your life. Not just money, not just the material things, but when we talk about prosperity in the kingdom of God, I'm talking about a fruitful life, a life that is going to promote and add to the kingdom of God. So hopefully tonight, you heard some encouraging words. Hopefully tonight, if you were not encouraged, maybe you were challenged. You heard something that's going to cause you to contemplate your, your life, your attitude, your behavior, how you're approaching your relationship with God that you might line up with him and receive the benefit, receive the blessing, and receive the protection for walking correctly in your righteousness as a child of the most high God. Mm -hmm. May God bless you and keep you tonight. That's my prayer. And I hope you heard something that you can hold on to that's going to bless you as we leave uh, this virtual platform, as we leave the sanctuary. Hopefully you heard something tonight that will give you that, that, that encouragement, that will give you strength if you've been weak, that will help you to be more motivated about getting this thing right. Life is too short for you to miss out on what God has for you. But there's a blessing in store for those who walk in righteousness and line up with the kingdom. I promise you that. So as we get ready to go tonight, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you tonight. We thank you for the word. We thank you, Lord God, for the encouragement from the word. That, Lord God, that prosperity is built in to the kingdom of God. We don't have to seek people out, go to conferences and pay them to tell us how to prosper. If we just open our Bible, read the word, it's already guaranteed that if you line up with God through Jesus Christ as a believer in the kingdom of God, you shall prosper. Not only will you prosper, but you will receive God's protection. We thank you now for putting a hedge around us. Even when we didn't deserve it, you've been faithful. Now, Lord, we just ask that you continue to look in on our sick and shut in. Bless those that are homebound, those that may be in a nursing home or hospital. And then, Lord, even look in on the incarcerated. Father God, while in their isolation, Lord God, reveal yourself to them that they might desire to be saved. Then, Father God, give us traveling grace as we leave the sanctuary, as we leave the virtual platform tonight from this midweek Bible study. Lord, let us make it to our destination safely. Let us find everything decent in our order. Have your way now in our lives. Continue to strengthen us in every facet of life. Just have your way. Bless our efforts here today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I thank God for each one of you in the sanctuary tonight. For those that are viewing virtually, I say to you that God loves you. Pastor loves you. I look forward to seeing you soon. We're coming back into this place on Sunday morning and lift the praise unto his name. 
Have a great rest of your week. Have a great evening. And we'll see you soon.